Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining this video with me. Uh, this is Latel, your astrologer and your spiritual counselor. Uh, today, we have a very special guest, uh, Mr. Elliot Adam. How are you, Elliot? Hello, Latel. It's so good to be with you. Thank you so much for inviting me along. I'm, I'm so excited to talk about the myths with you today. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, everyone knows, uh, Mr. Uh, Elliot Adam is actually the author of um, Fearless Tarot. Yeah, this amazing terror book, and also uh, Terror in Love. Yeah, I'm um, personally, I've been such a, a big fan for um, uh, Elliot. So uh, would you like to tell uh, our audience a little bit about yourself? Sure, yes. I'm Elliot Adam. I'm the author of Fearless Tarot and Tarot in Love. And um, I'm a tarot card reader uh, who's been working really professionally since I was about 16 years old. So that was back in like 1800 or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. And so um, I've been doing it a long time. Uh, but I just find that tarot is most useful for people when they're not afraid of it. And so my whole book, Fearless Tarot, is about taking the fear out of some of those frightening cards and really interpreting in them as symbolism to empower yourself instead Absolutely. of be frightened of them. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Uh, I sometimes, you know, I, I do get inquiries as well from uh, clients asking, you know, uh, should I do this? You know, for example, is this against my religious beliefs? You know, is this, mm. you know, evil? Mm -hmm. You know, am I doing the right thing? You know, if I come to you for a reading session, right? So I do feel that a lot of people have this misconception about what tarot mm -hmm. is, right? And so what yes. I, that's the reason why I really you know, I saw your book on Amazon. I was like, okay, I have to read this book. You know, the, the title is exactly what people need. It's to be fearless. <laughs> yeah. And to really get to Absolutely. know Carol. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So, you know, as um, I think um, all of you guys know, uh, um, both um, Elliot and me are um, fans of uh, Greek mythology. And uh, this is also, you know, um, the reason why I published this Oracle deck, Oracle of the Mythic Heroes, because um, I just loved the stories. And I do feel that, you know, we are the myth and we are still, you know, learning the same lessons as our ancestors, you know, from thousands of years ago. And so I'm really curious about, you know, Elliot's journey uh, with Greek mythology and, um, you know, how did it start? Oh, my God. Well, I'll tell you about me and then I can't wait to hear about you because I'm also curious about how you discovered it. But the way I found Greek mythology is I grew up very poor. Uh, we had no money as, as children. And so I would go to the library and I would find myself uh, going in the children's library to the mythology section. And there was a book. It took me 30 years to find this book again, but I found it. Ooh. And this is my first intro to Greek myth. Um, it had these beautiful pictures oh, of wow. all the gods and goddesses on it. And yeah. As a kid, I must have taken this book out like 20 times, you know, and I would just read it voraciously. And I thought, these are such interesting stories. As a kid, I always used to draw owls yeah. for some reason. And then I opened up the page and then there was this goddess and she had the owl on her shoulder, <laughs> Athena. Athena. And yeah. I thought, who is Athena? Oh, my goodness. So I just was just set a fire by these mythologies because they reminded me of the fairy tales. They reminded mm. me of uh, the stories that I heard growing up. And they spoke to something really deep in me. And right. so I have been in love with the myths ever since I was a kid. They have given me such a great moral compass. And they've also given me so much uh, to kind of delve into that's informed my work in tarot mm. and symbolism as well. Absolutely. So that's how I got started with the myths. I've just adored them. Uh, what about you, Lethal? Yeah, I think it's really like, you know, it's almost like you, you met your soulmate, right, Elliot, right? You saw that book, you know, and by the way, that is a, that looks like a heavy book. I mean, as a kid, if you yeah. had carried it around, that was a lot of heavy work, yeah. Um, for me, it was really uh, different because, uh, you know, I grew up in, uh, in communist China and we had no opportunity to study Western mythology. Um, it was just not a part of the, uh, the, the agenda, you know. <laughs> so sure. um, the first time I actually encountered Greek mythology was when I was already in my 20s. And that was with my first astrology teacher when I lived in Australia. Uh, most astrology teachers, they would start their, you know, class by, you know, teaching you the, the traditional, the chart calculation, the planet and things like that. But my astrology teacher talked about Greek mythology. 
And that's how mm-hmm. he started、um, this whole thing. And so I didn't, my understanding about each planet was not really about、um, the, the traditional way. Yeah. Let's say the sun represents this, the moon is that. But I read、mm-hmm. the myth. And from the myth, my teacher asked me, So from the story, what do you think the planet means to you? Right. So, for example,、um, he would say things like, you know, okay, so now you know Apollo stories, right? He's like this, he's like that. So, what do you think as a planet、um, it means on our chart? You know, what, how can、mm. you associate the stories of Apollo、um, or sometimes Hades to,、um, to our planet,、um, the star sun、um, on our chart, et cetera, et cetera.、Mm. And, and I remember that was really the fascinating part of the stories. And just, so that's how I started. And I just never, Let that go. <laughs> oh, I just love that. What a brilliant teacher of astrology, too, because it can be a rather abstract topic for a beginner. Yeah. Yeah.、Uh, it can be very formulaic. And sometimes you're thinking, oh my goodness, I have to remember what does the moon mean again? And what does that、yeah. mean when it's in this house? And I don't know. But to make the astrology planets、yeah. characters、mm. absolutely brilliant because then there are people. Almost, you're getting to know in your chart. They're living in you, in your head, in your、yeah. spirit. And you can start to kind of dialogue with them on a deeper level. I think that's a wonderful teacher to teach astrology like that. 100%. He was very different. Yeah, very different guy.、Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And、uh, he also had this, his own design,、um, you know.、Um, Greek mythology cards.、Um, it was, you know, he didn't really publish them. It was just, he, he was also, you know, very good at graphic design things. And I was,、uh, remember, I was looking at his cards and I was thinking, this is, it's almost like, I don't know why, maybe just me. It reminded me of, because when I was a kid, I was very fascinated by、um, uh, video games, you know, the、mm-hmm. RPG, like Dragon Quest, you know, that kind of stuff, right? Me too. I love them. <laughs> Legend of Zelda, all of that. Yeah, that,、them. right? And I suddenly felt it was similar to that. It was almost like the stories of the gods and goddesses and heroes and heroines are a little bit like an RPG game because they're just a, so, it's so complex.、Uh, there's love, there's hate, there is you know, family, and you know, there's children, there's lovers. So you know, everyone is there. And so that really you know,、uh, picked my interest, I think. And then after that, I just never. Stopped about so many、um, books, right? But when I talk about、um, you know, this fascination with my parents, they don't really understand it. They think it's just, <laughs> they think mythology is for children. So, and at least you know,、yeah. in China, in Chinese culture, right, China has mythology as well, but Chinese mythology、yeah. is really for children, I guess. Yeah. The Monkey King, you know, that kind of stuff, right? So, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So,、um, who is your favorite、um, Greek hero and also the heroine? Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's a great question. And you know, I had to think about it because, you know, when I got into mythology as a child, I was always into the gods, the、mm. goddesses. I was、mm. into like those huge archetypes.、Yeah. And the heroes, you know, I would kind of get into them a bit. And it wasn't till later when I was, you know,、uh, reading the Iliad and the、mm. Odyssey,、mm. then I was like, okay, this is fascinating. So, I mean, hands down, I mean, I like the O heroes. So I like Odysseus. <laughs> Number one,、okay. I like Orestes. <laughs> And, Orestes,、um, uh, oh wow, <laughs> I love him. I love, I um, you know, I love the um,、uh, you know, the the myths with him. And then I also like Orpheus a lot too.、Uh, But yeah, Odysseus, yeah. you know, I I just love his craftiness. I love yeah, that Athena yeah. favors him because he's、uh, of the many ways, you know, and I, he's just such a fascinating character. But also just the myth. Of、mm. him trying to get home、mm. and going through all the trials and tribulations. It's so symbolic of our own hero journey, where, you know, we are moving sometimes past the island of the lotus eaters and we can stay there and enjoy the beautiful flowers and then zone out. Maybe the lotus is,、um, you know, drugs or alcohol or、uh, yeah. procrastination or, you know, whatever. And we can kind of get drawn into that. Yeah. And, you know, facing our greatest fears and, and the Cyclops and all of that, all to get home, which for me is like a symbol of like coming back to self. You、yeah. know, I think it's just such a cool myth. So, Odysseus for sure, because we have the Odyssey and there's just such a great,、um, you know, I mean, Homer, I mean, you can't, he's the first. It's, it just doesn't get better than that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and then I, for I, heroines, mm, oh, mm. go ahead, please.、Uh, no, 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 please, please go. Yeah. Yeah.、Um, oh, heroines.、Yeah. Um, Those are a little more tricky because, you know, ancient Greece, it was very patriarchal. There wasn't a lot of heroines. There wasn't、True. a lot of female、yeah. figures who are, you know, big and strong and that. 
Yeah. You know, the one that comes to mind is Atalanta, yep, who's, yep. Um, you know, uh, the devotee of Artemis, the, mm-hmm. the goddess of uh, the hunt. She's kind of, I think she's left and abandoned and then yeah. raised in nature and yeah. ends up, uh, you know, becoming kind of uh, someone on the fringe of the society. So I, I kind of like her because she's kind of cast out by the society, mm-hmm. which I can relate to in my <laughs> life. And yet she kind of finds a way to be valuable to come back into the society and then but to be in her her own way and and she tries so hard to keep her individuality she tries so hard to be the devotee of artemis who's just off in the woods and untamed by man Mm. and yet there is like the greeks they just didn't want that they wanted her to get married so they (laughs) you know throw a few golden apples at her yeah yeah. you know so then i'm kind of like oh artemis you know atalanta if you only would have just stayed with Artemis, you know, but, but uh, she's a cool hero for sure. And then Helen, I love Helen, Mm, uh, mm. not so much because she's a hero, but kind of semi-divine. And if Mm, you mm. research Helen, you know, if you go to uh, Sparta, Mm. uh, she's actually worshiped as like a goddess. She's actually this really, and her name, Helen, it's like Helenes, it's the Greek name. So she's kind of like the goddess of Greece in a way. So anyway, I could talk about the myths for two hours and bore you all to death but who are your favorite uh uh, mythological heroes my favorite hero is definitely orpheus and that was the first actually the first mythological story that i actually read um after you know my i completed my astrology study right not through my teacher but you know just by myself um i'm still today i'm i'm fascinated by that story and i'm so touched by what he did for eurydice um, but I guess, you know, for people like, you know, us, right, working in this profession, I guess we all have a little bit of Orpheus in us, right? Because mm-hmm. Orf- I see Orpheus really as a wounded healer, right? He mm-hmm. played this beautiful um, music for to heal people's soul. But at the end of the day, he lost his own wife and he couldn't save her from the underworld, mm-hmm. right? So probably, you know, he's playing, you know, music every day. But where does he find his counsel and where, you know, who is going to mm-hmm. heal him? And, and I really feel that, you know, sometimes as a, a therapist or as a counselor, and we're, that's our mission, we're trying to help people find their path, but sometimes we, we're also, you know, fighting our own inner demon, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, the, I, I, personally, I resonate with Orpheus the most, yeah. Oh, and, I love Orpheus. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And for female uh, um, heroines, of course, Atlanta is amazing, right? And I I see her uh, her archetype in my clients a lot. So, you know, with um, Oracle of the Mystic Heroes, you know, I will use this deck in my um, sessions with my clients as well. Mm -hmm. And I I realize a lot of women would pull this card. um, because Interesting. Yeah, because they are, you know, I don't know about the culture in Chicago much, right? But in... Yeah, there she is. Yeah, the perfectionism. Yes, perfectionism. Yeah. I think that's so appropriate. Right. But I realize there's a, you know, because a lot of us, right, we, I guess, you know, we all want to be Atlanta. We want to be excellent in what we do. And, but sometimes the purpose can be a little bit different, right? For Atlanta, I think a huge part of her, of course, she was admiring, you know, um, uh, Artemis and all that. But I think there was also a very strong part of her wanting her, the validation from her father. But her father abandoned her. And that's oh, why yes. That's why at the end, she went back to her father and said, you know, uh, what am I going to do? And the father said, you marry a man because I want a son, right? And so she did and she compromised. And you can see how much validation she really needs. And this is just a very interesting streak of loneliness in her, I feel. And sometimes mm. I see that in, in my clients a lot. Um, maybe mm. they're working really hard. They're trying, trying really hard, literally to win a parent's validation. But it's like a black hole. It's never validated, mm-hmm. <laughs> that mm-hmm. kind of energy, right? So I, I see her um, appear a lot in, in the reading. Um, and the other one is Penelope. I, I like mm-hmm. a lot, yeah. Um, she, you talked about Odysseus, and that's mm-hmm. the wife, right? She waited for... Odysseus for that long and she was so creative in her solutions to distract her suitors and she also took the the role of the queen of Ithaca right she ruled the country and she was not just Mm -hmm. twitching her thumb and sitting there and thinking where's my husband right and sometimes I don't really see Penelope as just patience I see her I see her as creativity 
Hmm. And that, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And so that's why in uh, Oracle of the Mythic Heroes, I associated her with the Deccan, uh, the, with uh, the constellation sign Leo, because I feel mm-hmm. that it's not just about her, you know, uh, waiting patiently sitting there, but her creativity and also her her faith in you know her husband, you know, coming back one day. So that's something that I really like and I really admire. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, she's a wonderful uh, character from mythology for sure. And she's also yeah. that mother of Telemachus and yeah. she's, mm. you know, raising the future king and she's trying to keep those awful suitors at bay and yeah. uh, keep her dignity and keep her home and keep her uh, husband's possessions together. And I think that is so interesting what you say about uh, a lot of women that you meet with and the need for the approval from the family and the father. I, I never looked at Atalanta like that, but absolutely, mm. she is rejected by the father, and she does go back, and she does uh, end up forgiving him uh, yeah. for you know leaving her. Mm. Uh, so, so that's fascinating. And and uh, you know, Orpheus, I mean, he's so brilliant because as a therapist, you're right, or even as a tarot card reader, you're going into the underworld, you're mm. going into mm. other people's underworld, and you are trying to bring back a part of them back to the light and, you know, let them heal that. And it's such an interesting story too. You know, he's almost out of the underworld and he does what all of us do. You know, we are, Mm -hmm. we're all set up for success. Mm -hmm. We just have one more step to take and we're over the finish line and we're onto that. And then what do we do? We look back, we look back, (laughs) we look over our shoulder and we say, Oh, do I really want to do this? Maybe. And then we lose it. So it's like, Keep going. Don't stop and look back. Don't think about what's behind you. Yeah. Stay focused on the goal. I, I just I just love that myth so much. So it's amazing, right? We learn so much from uh from the myth and everything. And uh, I wish more people would uh you know would give themselves an, a chance to read Greek mythology, you know. Mm. Yeah, what I I'm it's not actually not very popular in Hong Kong. What about in uh, in Chicago? Do children read myth since a, a young age? Uh, yeah, you know, in school we're taught, uh, at least when I was a kid, and that was a long time ago. But we mm. were taught, um, you know, one chapter in uh, our, our history book would be about Greek mythology and the different gods and goddesses, and it wasn't a major curriculum. But if you go to university here, you can take mythology class. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. a big thing. You know, mm. I studied ancient Greek language in mm. college mm. and mm. learned all the old Homeric hymns and uh, all of that sort of thing. And I just, I love the language. I love the the history there. So college, you can really get into classics a little I, bit yeah. more. But, but you know, it's it's also on our television, you know, mm. Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Uh, there, yeah. there was a movie, but now there's a big show on Disney and kids are getting inter- introduced to mythology that way or yeah. the animated Hercules show from Disney, yeah. you know, yeah. when I was a kid that introduces people. So myths are just everywhere, everywhere. here, yeah. uh, but they're not, they're not things that general people on the street are like, Oh, did you hear that myth about Hercules with blah, blah, blah. You know, nobody mm, says that says here, that. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's kind of a niche. It's, yeah. it's kind of something that really intellectual or kind of nerdy people kind of get into and then, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Kind of just, you know, they kind of get into it, but I think that's why your deck is such a great service to where you live because people will see this and they'll learn the myths, they'll start to interact with them and then they'll make those connections with their deeper self and the lessons that they have to teach. Because I think that's when the myths are the best is when we're dialoguing with that deepest inner self. Mm, 100%, yeah. Maybe I should make a Chinese version of that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm actually, uh, yeah, I actually, uh, I contacted a uh, a publisher in Taiwan and hopefully they will be interested in do, uh, you know, the foreign, foreign rights, right? in uh, in mm-hmm. chinese and so that you know more people in uh, in china in taiwan and singapore you know they will be able to have the access to this deck yeah if they prefer to read things in chinese yeah yeah absolutely you know things get translated all the time i what just heard my book was translated into russian and it was oh, really in russia yeah it was so weird and the cover is different it doesn't look anything like you know oh how it's different it cover looks, is but- different oh, okay Mm-hmm. Covers different, but they they took basically the book and translated it into Russian, and I just think that's so cool. It's like, wow, I I can't speak Russian, but <laughs> that's awesome that people can get something out of it there. Yeah, you know? that's so, several extra million million people, right? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I yeah. hope so. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, do you have any uh, plans to uh, visit Greece anytime this year? 
actually do. So I don't know if I told you this, but for the last 25 years, mm-hmm. I've been working on an ancient Greek tarot deck. So okay. I've been drawing yeah. it yep. and redrawing it and going back and forth. And I've never, you know, gotten it off like out, but I finished it about eight times. And mm. because I'm a perfectionist, I'll mm. say, oh, this art now at the 78th card doesn't match the art from the first card. So now I have to do the whole thing over I, again. I, I mean, again. So yeah. I've been doing this hamster wheel. I've been running forever. Well, this year I was lucky enough. There's a patron that found me and she loved the deck. And she mm. said, you're getting this published this year. So she's investing in it. Mm. And she's sending me to Greece to write the accompanying book. So I'm going to go to all the ancient temples. I'm going to be having people along with me on my YouTube channel, Elliot Oracle, where I'll be in front of the temple of Artemis and I'll tell her myth and I'll kind of do a camera thing and a Q and a with people. And I just love Greece. I've been there a couple of times. I saw you were in Greece too, on your uh, Instagram, weren't you? Were those pictures of you in Greece? So I go to Greece every year. Yeah. So every year. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So I was wondering when, do you know when you're going to be there? I'm not 100% certain yet. So I'm thinking October, but it's still up in the air because we might be moving this year. So there's Uh, just all this stuff. And plus I have to finish the deck. So I'm on this really tight schedule to try to get all the artwork done by April. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. So I'm usually I go to Greece um, every September. Yeah. And one of the the reasons is because I go to Delphi. I've been to Delphi so many times, but every time I go there to pray, I and people, love it there. yeah, and people think I'm psycho because I'm there. I'm literally I'm praying, you know. But but you, you when you go to Delphi, right? You see usually there's just tourists, you know, carrying cameras from other European countries, yeah. American tourists, and whatever. You actually don't see a lot of Chinese people there. I guess it's just not very easy to fly to there. Yeah. Um, and so I'm literally they're praying at the temple of Apollo and mm-hmm. people think, what is this guy doing? <laughs> That's I love now. that. Yeah. That is, that is so awesome because that is my absolute favorite place okay. on the face of the planet is Delphi. Yeah. And it's because of Delphi, I even wrote my book. Mm, mm. So, um, you know, long story short, I was a classical oboist. I used yep. to play in the symphony orchestra. Right. And I did a concert in Dublin at mm. the Royal Academy of Music. I did a solo concert. And I just realized that I didn't love it as much. I was anxious. And I was just like, why am I trying to be perfect? Mm. You know, why am I mm. trying to do this instrument all the time and trying to work on reads all the time? Well, anyway, I did tack on a trip to Greece afterward. Mm. And I, you know, got away from doing tarot readings for about 10 years. When I went to university, I went and got my doctoral degree in classical Mm. oboe. And so I didn't really talk about my tarot work because Mm. um, I was a little ashamed of it. I was like, oh, well, that's Mm. not really respectable. I'd rather be an important musician in an orchestra, you know. Yeah. So I went to Delphi and I was in line for the temple to see the ruins. And um, the lady who was selling tickets said to me, who are you? Um, Mm. And and what brings you to Delphi? And I said, well, I'm Elliot. And instead of saying I'm an oboist, I said, I'm actually a tarot card reader. Mm. And I have my cards with me. Would you like a reading? Mm. And she said, yes, yes. And so she pulled me over this broken column, you know, and we sat down in front of the temple. And I started to read her cards and she started to cry. Oh, that's amazing. And she said, this is exactly what's going on. You have to meet my friend here. So then I met her friend and he owns a shop there. Uh And then I was reading his cards and then I was reading his friend's friend. Well, anyway, that night they said, you need to meet our friend Apollonios. He plays the ancient Greek oboe. Mm. And um, I said, oh my God, that's so interesting. I play the oboe. They didn't Mm. know that. And I said, I'll bring my oboe with me. So there we were in the moonlight and the Castalian spring and I'm playing the oboe and he's playing the ancient oboe. And it was just the most profound experience. I mean, so cool. Yeah. I mean, Uh, Delphi, I... When was that? How many? It was in 2015. In fact, hold on a second. I'm going to show you a picture of it. Yeah, kind yeah. Of funny. Yeah, here's me and that old Greek man. Oh wow! And I'm, oh, that's so I'm playing cool. the modern oboe, and he's yeah. playing the ancient oboe. The ancient oboe. Wow. And, and the old man, he didn't speak any English. He only spoke Greek, and I don't speak modern Greek. I, I know ancient Greek kind yeah. of, but not yeah. modern. Yeah. But he held my hand, and he said, "You've been gone for such a long time." 
but you're home now mm. and you're ours. Mm. And I'm just like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I got home and I said, why am I not doing my tarot? Yeah, yeah. My job is to do readings. It's what I did as a kid. It's what I did. I opened a shop. Why mm. am I trying to be a perfect musician? Mm. So, you know, I just, um, I kind of faded out of the oboe and I started learning the harp, but then I wrote my book and then I made my online presence happen in 2017 and it just took off. But yeah. It's because of Delphi. I mean, I know that's a long story, but Delphi is just, it's, it's amazing. And I love that you pray there. Yeah. That's it's, so lovely. It's awakening, right? I mean, Del Delphi, the, the energy is so interesting. <sighs> oh, I, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you, you really feel it, right? And and I don't know. I just, I, I can never get tired of going to Delphi. I mean, I have a really good mm. a local friend, a Greek friend there. So every time I'm, I'm in Greece, at least I sp spend two weeks there. And then he would drive me to the places I want to see. Um, but every year we go to Delphi. Um, oh. I don't know what to say about that place, right? And also uh, tr we traveled uh, quite a lot um, outside Athens, you know, um, further north, right? To see uh, Meteora, um, you know, the, uh, oh, the wow. monasteries. Yeah. And uh, my favorite place uh, is uh, Penipoles, uh, Penipo Penipo Pel Peloponnes. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So yes. there is actually another temple of Apollo um, called the Temple of Apollo Vase in on the mm -hmm. um, west west yeah part of uh, uh, it's one of the best preserved temples in yeah. ancient Greece yeah yes. yeah so we we drove my God it was so difficult to drive to there yeah but when I was there I was in peace and, and it was nothing there I, have you been to a uh, um, Vase that place not yet no. I'm so excited yeah. to go but I. I've studied those temples and, you know, yeah. the, the floor is all kind of rocked and, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. but the, the columns are all there. And because it yeah. was so remote, mm. it wasn't, you know, devoured for uh, building material, which is what happened to a lot of those temples. Yeah. So it was very well preserved, actually. The the, the pillars, where everything mm -hmm. was there. Um, but it was, I think they were trying to really protect it, right? So it was completely covered. Um, mm -hmm. So you can't really see it from outside. If you know mm. what I mean, yeah, you can't really get a yeah. good photo of that because it's completely covered by plastic, you know, the, the sheets. Uh, but when you go yes. inside, you 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 can see the temple from inside, and it's it's very <sighs> magical, yeah. So that's a really I have to go there. Yeah, it's it's just a little bit difficult to get to because you know the road is very you know rocky and it's you know twists and turns. Um, I think the Greek government should spend more money on that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you been to the uh, Corician Cave in Delphi? Have you been there yet? Corician. It's kind of, mm. it's um, it's kind of up a very winding road. It's a remote cave where the mm. first oracles used mm. to give their oracles uh, before the Temple of Apollo. Oh. But it's way up on the top of Mount Parnassus. It's uh -huh. so cool. Uh -huh. And you can often hire a taxi person in Delphi to drive you up there. But these roads are frightening. They are literally on the edge of the mountain. And you look oh. down and it's just this precipitous drop. But that cave is so cool. Oh, cool. You have wow. to see it. It's called the Corician Cave. Corician Check Corician it out next time okay. you're in Delphi. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much for the info. I've been to a, a really interesting cave in Greece, but it's not uh, on the mainland. It was on, um, on an island called um, Samos. Oh, Samos Harris Island. Yeah. Island. Exactly. So I went to see the uh, Harris Temple there. Yeah. So, you know, it was um, the ancient. Isn't there just like one little column left now or something like that? It's three. <laughs> three. Okay. Three. Well, that's better than I yeah, thought. <laughs> yeah, three. But the, uh, the, the whole site, right? The uh, archaeological site is huge, right? So uh, it's definitely worth seeing. But the cave that I went to with uh, Pythagoras Cave. So, oh wow! Yeah, so you know the the, the mathematician, the astrologer, right? So yes. you know, I remember yeah. I, I hired a driver, and we drove for like three hours because it was in the mm. mountains, right? And finally, we got there, and it was all the way up. You have to climb. You know, the cars cannot go that high, right? So you climb for yes. like 30, 30, 30 minutes and you get there. It was just a cave there, but I don't know. Sometimes maybe people like us were kind of crazy. You know, when you stand there. And you just feel that all can see what mm. how Pythagoras was teaching his students in this cave. You know, all this kind yes. of crazy, crazy thoughts. Yeah. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Oh mm-hmm. God, that's so cool. I haven't been to Samos yet either. I can't wait to go to all these places. And I yeah. think you've just inspired me to go there as well. I, so, I want to visit Argos. I want to go to Olympia. I want to go to all these yeah. other places. Yes. Yeah. I've yeah. mostly been in Attica when I go to Greece. Yeah. So yeah. this will be so exciting this mm-hmm. next time. This year I'm planning to go to um uh Volos. So uh Mount Pelion. Yeah, because uh, I want to. Ah, yes. Yeah, they have some amazing, you know, beautiful beaches. Of course, um, there's mm-hmm. also Centaur's Pass, um, and you can also oh. see the Cave of Chiron, which is just a cave, mm. right? But again, you know, there's, yeah, there's definitely a reason why people call that the Chiron's Cave. So, so mm-hmm. yeah. So hopefully this year I'll I'll get to see that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm eager to uh, follow along on your adventures and your Instagram and look at all your wonderful pictures. That'll be so exciting. Absolutely. I'll upload them or I'll send, you know, I'll update you, you know, when I'm there. But hopefully, you know, if you are in Greece around the same time, hopefully we can see each other in Athens. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Great. Absolutely. I'd love that. Great. So thank you so much, uh, Edit, for your time. Yeah. And, uh, and thank you. Uh, all, all our audience uh, for supporting us and um, so far and remember uh, Mr. Elliot Adam, Fearless Tarot and Tarot in Love. If you're interested in reading tarot cards and learning the the uh, uh, the secret of tarot, um, check out his books. All right, so oh. wish you a wonderful year of Dragon, Elliot, and I'll see you next time soon. Well, thank you, Latao. It's been an honor to uh, be with you. Thank you very thank much. You. See you next time. Bye.